Hello everyone, this is Shashidhar on behalf of Edureka. This webinar is all about to tell you what is ETL, give you a brief understanding of ETL and why it is needed. And then we'll take you all for a walkthrough for uh, talent ETL, how talent is helping you for doing ETL stuffs. So that is the intention of this webinar. So the agenda for this webinar is let's understand why ETL is needed and what is ETL. What does it stand for? What is the reason it came into picture? And what are the ETL tools in market today? Who is doing good? And then where is talent standing according to its capabilities in the market? And then we'll see a short demo on how talent can help you in doing ETL tasks, right? So let's first understand why ETL is needed. So as we know today in real world, we face many data problems. So data is scattered across the locations. So business will be in different geographical locations and each of them will handle in different formats and different business rules will be there. And data is stored in different types of sources. Maybe one customer is giving you an, an flat file and another customer is giving you an Excel and one more is giving you an, an XML file. And one is just putting the data in UI and you will have to extract it, something like that. And then volume of data keeps on increasing. So today you have some data and tomorrow you get along with the old data, the fresh set of data or something corrected in the old data. So in either of the cases, volume of the data is increasing. Data can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured. And if you're following some structured way of putting the data in, then you would be getting them in structure format. Sometimes it would be semi-structured or it could be an unstructured as well, right? So for all these reasons where data management is a problem, we need to have someone who manages all these problems, you know, enables us to manage it in efficient way and manage the data. That is why we need ETL. So ETL is one stop solution. So ETL provides a one stop solution for all the problems which I'm going to see now. So extract. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, the heterogeneous sources are available. As I said, one in flat file, one in Excel, one he can tell to connect to my DB and extract the data. So they are all different kinds of source system where I'll have to connect and get the data or read the data, right? So extraction is the first problem wherein we have different structures and different formats and then transform. So after I get all these information and I read it by not providing a lot of effort on the source system, I should not be affecting that. I should be extracting with minimal effect to the source system. But transformation, after I read it, according to the business rule or if i have to you know get one new column maybe timestamp every time when i load i need a new column which is timestamp something like that and i maintain an active or inactive flag and i apply some business rule if you know i'm getting some employee department data then this department has to get some bonus or something like that so all these things comes under transformation anything for that matter i'm just giving you a general example so all those business rules or whatever you're going to change the data from the source whatever you're reading all those things comes under transformation right so we'll have to take the raw data or the source data we'll have to transform them according to the business rules and if we want to get some you know new columns over there and derive some columns based on the source columns all of them comes under transformation right and then once you have finished all your business rules and you have separated the valid records invalid records so you take the decision to load that data into a target system so if everything is fine you directly go and load them into your target system and business decisions can be taken on the target data right if you find some mistakes maybe you will capture them with the right reasons and check with your data owner what could be the mistakes over there and you correct them and ultimately by doing this in iterative manner we'll be able to manage the data and get all of them corrected and we have an efficient set of data which is reliable to take business decisions on that right so for these all three steps is etl is one stop solution for you so what is etl so we understood what is the need i mean reasons why we need etl and also the steps involved in it you know extract transform load that is where etl stands for and now we see what is that actually what is the process so extraction is the process of extracting the data from the various homogeneous or heterogeneous data sources based on different validation points so as you can see in the slide so we have txt file we have xml file and we have xls file 
then we have a data sources we have ERPs, whatever it can be so all of these are it can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous data sources which i will have to connect to them or read them by you know not affecting the source system which should not be you know hitting them again and again because somebody would be dependent on these data sources for their business purpose so we should take that data and have a temporary storage right so this step is called extracting steps in ETL so let's move on so second step is transformation what is this transformation the entire data is analyzed and various functions are applied on it in order to load the data in the target database in a clean and general format okay so we have rules like a few columns will be mandatory and few columns should specifically have only these values and we'll have to do some lookups for getting the other value so for all those things transformation is the solution and we can clean them we can filter out them if we are deriving we can enrich the data values we are able to split the data we can split the data and if you want to join the data you can join it so all of this together is transformation on your business rules and ultimately we have a cleaned and formatted data for your further process right so this is transformation and the last step is load loading is the process of loading the data which you have already processed in a target repository using minimal resources that is what even when we read the data we should have minimal effort and even when we write we'll have to use the minimal resources and load it right so transform data can be again in any format you could have written to a file you could have written to a db whatever it is and then ultimately for your reporting purpose usually it goes to a data warehouse your target can be anything like depending on your business rules okay so once you have the clean and formatted data you can directly load that data into your target so what do you mean by minimal resources you can do a bulk uh, load to it so it takes uh, efficiently it loads if you are doing one by one row by row it is not that efficient but if data is really less then doing bulk is not good so we'll have to go for row by row something like that so depending on your business rules you will have to decide how you can load the data to the target using minimal resources so combiningly so extracting with not giving the effect to the source system transforming based on the business rules cleaning you know filtering splitting joining and whatever you want to do derivation enrich and then putting that data into your target is the etl complete right so what are the etl tools in today's market which are doing good in their own way right each of its tool will have uh, their own features wherein we will have to decide which one to use for our business requirement right so let us have a look at them so etl tools are the tools which combine all the three processes that is extract transform and load into a single programming tool so i'll have a etl tool so which will enable me to read an excel file read a text file connect to a mysql database connect to sap system something like that so i can just configure them read the data and transform it and load it back to my target right but what are the features of it so when do you call a tool as complete etl tool it should have few features which we are telling you right now so easy to use so the learning curve for that tool should be very low you should be able to understand it and uh, use it uh, uh, you know it's very easy to use it is very you know psychologically designed where you can understand okay if i do this option you know it is very clear for you so that is the ease of use it is graphical user interface right so usually etl tools will be a gui based tool so user friendly GUI that is what I was telling you so GUI will give you different windows where you can uh, choose some components you can configure it in another window you can run it in another window you can see the locks in uh, another window and it is like very interactive to you and very user friendly right and then inbuilt error handling so few things which are standard in ETL or you know uh, Java based tool means it will have its own uh, standard uh, error handling messages like then another ETL tool it will have its own components if you are including those components they will handle the errors they will log it as well for the repository default tables something like that so inbuilt error handling should also be there in that tool and then economical tool so if it's doing uh, right now we have a lot of competition in the market so giving a uh, lot of options for ETL and uh, having an economical price is what makes that product a successful product so it reduces expenses that is one way of looking at it in the business way but indirectly in as an etl tool if it is reducing expenses means if you are manually doing some work if you are converting and if you are filtering and doing some you know writing some a stored procedure to do some action 
So ultimately you are uh, spending on more resources or hardware or software ultimately ETL is doing everything internally so it reduces your expenses it has connectivity to everything and you can do it with only one tool and thereby it is reducing your expenses as well and also resource management and then better data management so previously it would have been very difficult to log errors or the see the data which has passed and take out report out of it so ETL tool is like configurable you can design jobs in such a way that every time when there is an incremental load you check the new data or if you want you can check the full data give report for the both ways something like that. so you have a better data management in an ETL tool and then of course increasing performance ETL tool whenever you're using this GUI and dragging and dropping the components ultimately it is generating an optimized code in the backend and also it has options uh, like if you have a great you know very large uh, lookup then you can have it in cache and uh, some you know increasing the java memory something like that few options which can increase the performance where a manual coding or the manual uh, you know or the way of handling uh, data management things would have been a costly code but then it generates a very optimal code right so you'll understand this how in background etl tool generates an executable code or a java code so it depends on which tool we are using so summarizing it has to be very easy uh, user friendly error handling should be available it should be a low cost and it should you know enable me to reduce resources or reduce the time we are investing on data management and it should give me a better data management solution a better view of looking into the data and of course it should increase the performance so if we have all these options in ATL tool it is a very good ETL tool to go ahead and give solutions for my business problems right so ETL tools, you know, various ETL tools which are available right now and which are very famous. Few of them we have put over here. So Informatica Power Center, which is kind of a, a leader in uh, ETL. So it comes with a license cost. And then we have uh, SaaS data integration. And we have BODS business objects for SAP and SSIS SQL uh, server integration services, ODI Oracle data integrator, IBM Infosphere information services and ultimately talent open studio for data integration So talent open studio will also be available in your open source and also there is an enterprise version of it So now let's understand talent as an ETL tool. So what does talent offers you for ETL solution? So talent is an open source software integration platform or a vendor like when we say platform or a vendor talent itself is a company and which has various products and one such product is talent open studio for ETL right so it offers various data integration and data management solutions so talent open studio for data integration so that is TOS for DI data integration is widely used as an ETL tool so right now uh, it is a very booming tool which has uh, very you know all these options which we discussed are available in talent so TOS acts as a code generator which converts all the underlying programs in Java at the backend. So we'll have a GUI where you can drag and drop the components and we'll have a filter component. Say for example, you have a join component. So you just drag and drop them and connect them and configure them. Ultimately, when you do this job at the backend, it is nothing but a Java. So when you run the job, the backend Java code will be compiled and executed and it is platform independent. You can develop in Windows, run in Linux. So it gives you that flexibility. So TOS acts as a code generator you know, which converts all the code into your Java at the backend. So you don't need to worry about it. It does automatically and of course that backend Java code which is generated is non-editable. You will have to come back to your uh, designer that is like GUI and you will have to correct if there are any mistakes but the ultimate code generated is not editable. TOS can be easily combined, convert and update data present in the various sources. It is very user friendly you know, psychologically designed so if you want to do a filter you just search for filter and you get all the related components and you can drag and drop them configure and use it for as per your business requirement so all these features talent provides you so what are the benefits of using talent yes these features are also available in all the other tools what is that talent is giving me extra or how it is very easy so talent as an ETL tool you know, uh, using this uh, TOS you can easily manage all the steps involved in ETL that is extracting it has dedicated components for files dedicated components for uh, different databases MySQL Oracle whatever you name so they are using this customized option say for example in Oracle we have indexing concept so in the component itself in the advanced settings we'll have all the options which can make that process of reading very optimized reading or writing 
as i mentioned we can do a bulk upload we can do one by one we can tell whether do insert first update first so it has all the components designed in a very customized and optimized way so it provides you all the options for etl extract transform and load it is developed on the top of eclipse graphical development environment so java if you are aware of java you'll be knowing about this tool so eclipse tool is the tool which they use for uh, developing uh, java code so already available apis will be there so you will just you include those packages and you start coding for your business requirement and talent etl is developed upon this framework so it is like just giving you a gui where you can drag and drop the components but then ultimately it is a java code at the end so it is built upon the eclipse graphical environment you can easily map the data between source and destination system with a simple drag and drop so we'll have this auto mapping options if the names are same in the source and target you can just auto map and if it is not you can just drag and drop you can do your business rules as i said you can introduce a new column get some uh, default values or the dynamic values over there you can do anything in a very simple way so talent open studio for di provides an improvised data integration so very user friendly you know a lot of options involved customized option involved for that particular component so we don't have just one component for all the databases we have different components for different databases different file formats so that the options for optimizing options for that particular db that particular format of file is available for you so it avails strongly connectivity easy adaptability and smooth flow of extraction and transformation process so once you you know see the demo you'll understand for a simple business requirement it is very easy to you know drag and drop configure them and convert your functional requirements into technical etl steps and have a solution for it and that solution will be very optimized and very professional like you can divide the data you know you can divide the error reports you can send an email of that error report to the data owner so it has a complete package for you so talent open studio for data integration is what we are going to see now so this is how your talent uh, tos for data integration looks like the recent version is uh, 6.4.1 so talent open studio for data integration is extensively used for integration between operational systems etl process and data migration so they are famous for all these things so it can do any etl process if you have you know uh, where uh, as an experienced professional i have done migration from mainframe to sap so mainframes has you know legacy data types and uh, sap has the modern data types so converting them you know a few of the binary things are there and you have uh, different languages to handle which take multi bytes so since it is integrated with java it is very easy to do something which is not possible in etl maybe if you take an example of another etl tool few options are not available and you cannot provide a solution for it but in case of talent if you're not having it in a standard way in talent we can write a java code or a, a sql script anything for that matter and you can integrate them in the etl job itself so that you ultimately provide a complete solution in etl itself right so to is for data integration so palette is the place where i get all my components and they are very neatly organized and the names of the components are psychologically designed so you can say if you want to do a filter you can just type filter if you want to do a bulk load you can just type bulk load all the related components for that category will be popped up over there okay so in palette of the tos you can find various component which will help you in designing the etl process right so tos provides more than 900 components and built in connectors so 900 components for all these uh, you know different categories which are being shown up uh, here so for example data quality will have some uh, you know matching algorithms all those stuff components fuzzy logic components and then file read all the file related we'll have different components for the file which i'll be showing in the demo and we have a logs and error catching components so each of this there are more than 900 components it's not like we'll have to know all the 900 components it depends on our business requirements so i'll be using big data and i'm using uh, some uh, you know uh, transformation components with that knowledge i can develop the job right so it has for anything and everything your name so using talent open studio can easily bridge between the file systems web services package interior applications and then data warehouses all app software as service cloud-based anything for that matter they have a connector for you so let's now have brief demo of talent as a data integration tool i'll tell you how we can download the tool how you can launch the tool and how you can develop a simple etl job taken a use case so we'll discuss about the use case 
uh, we'll first tell you how Talon can be downloaded and launched and then I'll tell you about the use case and we'll provide a solution for that use case, right? Okay, so as I informed you we'll have to download the talent tool first So how do we download the talent tool is to just to log on to talent.com? And this will be your welcome page. So in the welcome page you will be having the download section you can click on downloads and When the download page appears we can choose the product which we want so for us now uh, we are dealing with talent data integration that is TOS DI talent open studio for data integration you can just click on download free tool and then you can click download over here which downloads you a zip file which has the complete binaries for your talent open studio data integration right so once you have downloaded it you will have a zip file downloaded like this for the demo purpose, uh, I'm showing you, you know, I have downloaded TOS that is Talent Open Studio for Big Data. That means Talent Data Integration plus Big Data is Talent Open Studio for Big Data. Okay, so it is a superset. So it also has all the components which is there in Talent Open Studio for Data Integration. So you can either download Talent Open Studio for Data Integration or you can download the Talent Open Studio for Big Data. It will have all the components which are available in talent integration as well. So when you download the talent open studio for big data, you are actually downloading a super set of data integration software, right? So once you download it, you'll have a zip file like this, which is TOS BD 6.4 version. Once you unzip this, you'll have a folder like this. So which will have all the binaries like for Windows or Linux or Solaris, all the executables will be available. This is the only step we'll have to do and the prerequisite is Java should be installed and Java home should be set That's the only prerequisite and you just have to double click on the required SH file or the exe file based on your OS So that is the only step required to launch your talent. Isn't it very easy as it is So once I double click on the Linux version dot sh file for my 64 bit uh, binaries then it will open up the talent open studio for big data for me So once you have launched the talent studio You'll have to create a project where you're going to develop your ETL jobs, right? For that we have an option over here to create a new project So we are having an ETL demo from Edureka So I'll name it as ETL demo Edureka and I say just create So it will create a project for me in my talent studio so once it has been created, I just select this project and I tell finish So it will open up the tool for me with all the prerequisite for that project and I can start developing the ETL job over there So this is the welcome page for you for talent open studio. I'll just close this welcome page It will open up all other windows for me so this is your talent open studio for big data which is the superset and it has all the components which is there in talent open studio for data integration right so this section is called repository wherein you can create business models it's just like another paint editor kind of thing where you'll be having uh, different shapes and connectors so you can create an er diagram or a workflow of the etl job to just to have a high level idea about what your etl job is doing okay and in job designs you are actually going to be designing your ETL jobs context means if we need any variables required for our ETL job where it has to hold some value for you it can be either used in only one job or it can be used in multiple jobs we are going to create it in context so that is context in talent language and if we have to embed some code in the PPT I was telling you if something is beyond ETL capability and you'll have to embed some of the Java code or SQL routines you'll have to do it in the code section and we can call that code in the ETL job and similarly for the same reason we have the SQL templates as well and whenever we are dealing with structures connections we can create the metadata where we create once and use many times so all those section comes under metadata and you can create documentation of the job or we can even attach the document which are required for the job in documentation section so all these features are available under repository window for you in talent and this section is called your workspace where you actually create your 
job design your job designer and code window whenever i create a new job all these uh, sections will be enabled so let me quickly create one job and let these windows be activated so i just come to job designs i right click on it and i say create job and i just give a meaningful name saying job and this is the first job which i am doing and i will give you an etl hands-on so purpose of this job is to provide insight of etl job and talent so same can be the description so i have given all the mandated thing uh, so author will be automatically populated this will be provided in the initial section where i have downloaded the talent and we can maintain versions over here major versions i can click on capital m smaller version i can click on small m you can observe the changes over here and if you want to maintain the status of the job whether it is in development testing or production you can just keep that status and if you want to provide any documentation path over here you can provide it or wherever you want to store these things you can select the path of it okay only these things are mandatory and with this i just say finish it will create an etl job under job designs and it will enable all the windows which are required for developing the jobs so as i said they have been activated so this is a designer section where i can drag and drop the components and connect them as per my business requirement and as i told you when i was explaining in the ppt that whatever i drag and drop it is ultimately a java code at the background so that java code can be visible when i click on this code section right so here is what i create my etl job so this is designer window and code window and this window is palette window where all my categories of components have been listed i can go into each of these categories use the components from those categories and whatever i do with the job so whatever i gave the name of the job author creation date modified date all the information about the job will be available in the job window here and context whatever context i create the variables which i create for this job will be available over here whenever i drag and drop a component that component properties will be available here we'll see it in the demo and after i have finished the development of the job i can run the job i can kill the job or i clear the logs over here all these actions can be done in run window so having the knowledge of the widely used sections in the talent windows so we'll start with a use case to develop one etl job so let us put down a simple use case i'll show you the input files and what is the expectation out of the input files is what we'll discuss now say so for example we have a sample input file which is uh, used for joining okay so let us see what is the data inside this sample input file so i have a data of a product it's a product data so i have a product id which is a numeric and i have a product name what is the name of that product and how much is the sales rating for that product so how well it is going in market so they have a rating of it and i have this data where they say what is a product id name and what is the sales rating of it okay having this input data i have a lookup data as well wherein key becomes product id i'll show you the lookup data so lookup data has the product id and what is the total investment or the expenditure which has gone for that product so that detail is available in another file right so what is the expectation is you'll have to the ultimate business goal is they have to know which is the highest sales rating product and which is the lowest sales rating product so that they can improve the sales of it or whenever they are getting to know which is the highest sales rating product they can have more demand or the production for it right so they understand that there is more demand and more sales rating is there they can increase the production and for the less demand or the less sales rating they can reduce the intake or the production and they can concentrate on selling the existing stock so that is the high level uh, business requirement but then when it comes to etl we'll have a little bit of problems in uh, data so we'll have to check the business rules and maybe they are only looking at sales rating as a number they'll not be able to understand we'll have to tell whether that rating is good or bad based on some baseline that baseline can be changing anytime so that is a requirement so my a single line requirement would be to take the lookup give me a data set 
wherein product id product name sales rating and also expenditure looked up value is also available so i'll have to create one master data like that and after i create that master data i'll have to draw conclusions out of it so which is the highest sales rating and which is the lowest sale rating that is one part and also i have to create a new column in my master data saying what is the index of it whether it is good index or whether it is bad index so i can take a threshold like if you can observe there is uh, starting from 6 till 10 i have the sales rating maybe 7 above 7 is good 7 and below 7 is bad so that is what uh, a baseline we can think of and we'll have to tell the management which of these products are good and which of the products are bad and also tell which is the highest and which is the lowest so having that in mind let's start developing it and let's get to know what are the problems say for example first problem we encounter here is we have around 6 data set over here wherein one out six product id is not available in my lookup so i will not be able to get the total expenditure for that product so in this situation what should etl do it should actually take out that record and say to the data owner that lookup for this or the total expenditure for this is not available so i'll have to make a meaningful uh, data set and say what is the rejection reason for it so even that i have to take care and also few etl rules like a product name cannot be you know diary underscore products so we can replace hyphen underscore with a space or you want to print all the product names in capital letters something like that can be done transform data can be done and then when you are filtering out so they need all the good products in one output and all the bad products in another output right so in that way we can filter it out and give it to them so which are the good ones uh, going in sales and which are the bad ones going in sales so having this understanding in mind so let's go back and handle all these negative scenarios and check if etl makes my life easier okay so the first step what we have to do is to read this file right so let's get back to talon so reading file we'll have a component so what i am doing uh, as i said the component names are very uh, psychologically you know designed and we can easily find it so i am actually all the components in talent are starting with t so what i am going to read is a file so t file and what kind of file is it it is input file so t file input and which kind of file i am reading it is a delimited file as you know it is a comma separated value so whatever we saw till now it's a dot csv so it is a delimited file so this is how it is designed okay t file input delimited so i get a component over here and if you can see it the help or the tool tip is t file input delimited reads a file row by row with simple separated fields so that is what i want to read it right now so i can choose this component how do i get this component over here is i'll just drag and drop it so this is my t file input delimited and if you observe the component window now i'll have all the attributes needed for this component i should be able to configure them and read it okay so this is how i take a component to read a file so what it is asking me a uh, property type will be built in right now i'll introduce it to a repository in few minutes so after this is which file i have to read so i can just browse and take my file over here so it was uh, i have kept them in demo input so sample input file i have to read so i'll just say i have to read this file and uh, the row separator is slashing and the field separator since it is comma separated values it will be comma and i had a header over there so my header will be one and i did not have any footer and if you want to limit the number of records you can give the number of reports you want to limit from the first record and if you come here it always asks for a structure or schema to read the file yes i understand the file name is this and the row separator is this and field separator is comma but how many fields it has and what is the data type of those fields so that is one of the major information which my component needs so if i tell edit schema it will show up a window for me wherein i can come and manually create the data right i mean i can create five fields i can give the same name in the file and i can define the data types so this is actually a manual work right so why don't we you know talent provides us an option to read it from the file itself and it also predicts the data types and the length whatever is available in your data set and it will give you for a review you can review that and then you can accept it so how do i do it i'll show you now so rather than doing it manually as i already explained all the metadata where i create the structure once use it many times so i can come to metadata section 
so which file i am creating metadata for it's for a delimited file so i just right click and tell create delimited file and i say it is metadata for products so and i just say take the file which is my demo input and sample input file so just by giving this file my talent tool is able to read this file and if i tell next it will ask for all the attributes over here what is the encoding what is the field separator what is the row separator whether you have an heading so customize options i was looking at is one of the example is like this whenever you are reading usually the first row will be heading so you have a customized option here otherwise if you have more than one you can click here and give the number over there since in my case it is in the first row i can just come to a customization option here and if you can see here it is automatically clicked and set one after i click this so i say refresh preview so it has taken all the so i see uh you know it is separated by semicolon so let me change it to semicolon and i say refresh preview so i have all my columns listed over here so i can tell next so i have product id product name sales rating so all of this are taken as string if you want to change it to an integer you can do it right away here so if i know all my product id is integer so if you can see here so all of them are integer and even sales rating is integer so if you want to maintain it as integer you can maintain it as integer and just say finish so you have your metadata ready here so now if i say repository and i can choose the metadata which i have created now so i can just say okay and now it will take the schema over there previously it was empty whenever we check this edit schema and now we can view the schema which has been created so i did not manually create it so just by giving the file talent itself created and it gave it for my review and in review if i want to change anything i can certainly do it so in this way i have configured my input component which is reading my input file right and then i'll have to join another file which is lookup file right even for lookup file i'll have to create a metadata quickly we can create it so this is for lookup so metadata for lookup i can quickly give the lookup csv and even this is semicolon separated so i can tell next and i can say semicolon and header is the first row and i say refresh preview so it has taken the two columns and data will be available over there so product id and expenditure both are numbers if i want i can take it to integer and i say finish and now first time i showed you taking the file from palette which where components will be available and i configured them here by mapping them to repository right but another way to get the component is directly from metadata i can drag and drop so it will give me the list of components where i can use that structure or the file properties so i can just click on t file input delimited it will pre-populate all the values which is required for me right so if you observe the attributes of this component it is already taken the file name it's all grayed out because it is a repository if you want to change these values you have to go to repository and change it suppose if i want to try let's click on this to change it will give me an option either you can change it to built-in that is manual option or you can go and update in the repository because it might be used in many other jobs right and all these values will be pre-populated so we know two methods of doing it either take it and manually configure it or directly take it from the metadata and now where i have the input file i can even rename this to input so i can say products just by clicking on it so product input and i have the lookup now i need to join and map these columns to the target which i need in a different format so for mapping we have a column called tmap so i can just drag and drop them and also if i want i can just click on the designer and start typing the component name i'll get the list over here itself so i can take tmap which allows join column filtering you know row filtering transformations multiple outputs it is kind of a large component a heavy component which can do many options like this many features are available on this component so i'll just take this team up so whichever i joined first right so product input i'm joining first to team up so that will become a main row main row usually carries the data and even here i want to take the data so it is main row but i'm giving that to a mapping component okay so mapping component treat this row as lookup row 
so it will be a lookup though the main data is coming for tmap it is a lookup so that should be the understanding right the main row will be solid line and the lookup will be dotted line so now if i go inside this tmap i can see all my metadata which are created is available here and the lookup also it is available here so how do i join these two so there are options to join over here so what kind of join i should be doing is the inner join right i'm looking up the data and only data which is available should come in over here okay so i can select inner join and i can click on okay but what is the key for joining as we know the product id is the key from the input file i will have to drag and drop to the lookup of product so from the input file that product id should be equal to the lookup product id and inner join will happen on this right so after this inner join i should be able to take all this column from here and also the lookup column from here so once you have defined the joining key and you have told what kind of join you are making you can create the output over here name that output like you know products out and then you can simply drag and drop the columns you need so the mapping will be created and then from the lookup i'm trying to take the total expenditure so total expenditure will be taken from the lookup so in my output now i have four columns which has all the data which is required right but what about the inner join rejects so as i have previously told you we'll have to join the i mean we have to capture the inner join rejects with a valid reason so how will you catch the inner join rejects is the question so we'll have to create another output say inner join reject or product reject and of course when it is inner join reject i will not be getting the total expenditure value because no lookup x you know will be available for it so i'll have to only take for which product i'm not getting the lookup value so i'll only take these values of course my total expenditure will be null but even then we can take it and display that this lookup value is null similarly like how i have done it for the projects which will be going for output but i'll change one settings over here and uh, that is catch inner join reject is true so this output only catches which are the inner join rejects so i have inner joined conditions which will go for output in this products out section in products reject i will catch the inner join rejects and tell them this is because of the inner join reject that total expenditure is not up right so with this we have completed the mapping section of tmap okay so after this i'll have to put them into some target say for example our target is file right now so i can just take t file output delimited and this is for products which are uh, pass and i can just copy paste another component and i can name it as rejects so the first output which will be coming on tmap will be products out which i'll be giving it to product pass and i can configure this output component say i can go and create a new folder that is demo output so inside demo output i can create this file so maybe i can tell what is the file name over here i can just take the path of it this is home edureka and demo output so it's home edureka and demo output and i can see it is products output dot csv and then for the rejects i can take the reject output products reject and i can give it to the reject one and similarly i can copy this path and change the file and rename it as products reject and also as i said i can do some business uh, logics over here i told product name i can just come here and click on this editor and if i want to replace the hyphen or you can replace the make it uh, you know uppercase all the stuff i we have n number of string handling functions available so i can take replace and i can double click on this so i'll get the string handling over here so the string which i am looking at as input is row one dot product name which is my input 
and if I find a hyphen I can replace it with a space so I can do this so that my uh, you know diary products will be not diary underscore products but then diary space products so that should be the output so this is one simple example where you can transform your data right and also I said we can have another extra column here created say for example category and you can take sales rating again and you can do a transformation on it I'm just dragging and dropping sales rating but I'll write a condition over here if sales rating you know if it is greater than 7 then I'm using a ternary operator I can tell it is good category else I'll have to just use question mark first then if it is not greater than 7 I can make it as bad so that can be a derived column for me based on sales rating so I'll get a category also over here right so in products out I'll be getting the category as well so let's now run this job so we have just given a solution for the simple use case which we defined we are reading the data from input we are looking up the data with product ID key and I'm joining them and the joined records successfully will go to product pass and whichever does not join the data which is not available in lookup I'll be capturing it them in rejects so this is the simple solution which we can give so now let's run the job and check if there are any errors and we'll solve them so now the job has successfully run so let's go and check whether we have the expected output in demo output folder so in demo output folder we have products output created let's open it and as we have already seen a uh, diary product was having underscore now it is removed and we have a space introduced over here and based on seven or more than seven we have good category and bad category introduced over here so management can have look at it and uh, this is the output which we were expecting for products output dot csv and then if you come to products rejects so we did not have a lookup for one so it is a my you know footwear which was having sales uh, rating as six it doesn't have the lookup so this product is rejected and i have all the details to get to know which is the product which is product id product name and product sales category so in this way i can separate the filtered out uh, data to my products or to my rejects so going forward if management wanted based on category we wanted to divide the data then we can simply call t filter row and you can take the same data which was given to your product pass and you can introduce a condition if your product category is equal to good you can just check whether exact uh, case sensitive is available so it's capital g and capital b so if it is good i'll filter out to one of the delimited file i can just copy paste again and i can use it and change the name so i can give it to this filter and i can change products output good i can rename it as good and whichever gets rejected that will be my bad so i can just right click on this and filter rejects i'll be giving it to this so this is product passed but it is good and here it is product pass but it is bad so i can come here and change the file name to bad and i say sync columns because filter reject will also give me the reason why it has been rejected so that is a standard error message which will come along with your reject so it is displayed in green because it is standard so i'll just go back and run this job so it is successfully completed and now i have my good csv and bad csv as well so this is all with your good values you can see it over here and similarly we'll have for bad which has all the bad categories right so this is how you can again in bad category we have the error message because the condition which we gave that category should be equal to good is failed that is why it has been rejected and it can be your filter condition can be more than one in that case it makes sense to have this reason which is failed for what reason right so this is how with the simple solution for this etl we were able to read the file we were able to join the 
two files we were able to capture the rejects we were able to do a small transformation and also we introduced a new column and then we also filtered few of the business conditions and gave the management a separate file for good products and separate file for bad products so with the help of all these a good business decision can be taken and that is how etl is making your life easy hope you like this demo please follow us for more updates thank you one and all i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning